There's more holiday camp humour in 35 minutes in Heidi High. First on BBC One, Jimmy Savile makes more dreams come true as he fulfills the promise, Jim will fix it. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Jim will fix it. If you want to act out a right royal treat, have a watery chase or be swept off your feet. If you want to be an opera star or drink a mug of wartime char. If you want to make a puppy's tail wag or fight your way out of a broad paper bag, Jim will fix it. Jim will fix it. Jim will fix it. Gentlemen, everything is under control. Right, here we go with a letter from Southampton. Dear Jim, could you fix it for me to open Tower Bridge in London as I like playing with bridges? Thank you, Benjamin. Open Tower Bridge, that which we run across in the London mouth. And good heavens, what a tall order. But not if you write to Jim will fix it. Ah, Benjamin. Good morning. Hello. Welcome to Tower Bridge. This is it, here. It's a hundred years old this year. At least it's a hundred years since the foundation stone was laid. And you've come to see us open it for you, haven't you? But we've got a special surprise for you this morning. You're going to see it in a very privileged position. You're going to see it from the front of the sailing barge May. Would you like that? Come on then, let's go and get on board. Hello Benjamin, welcome aboard the May. The May is by a Thames sailing barge and she's 81 feet long and the mast is nearly 80 feet tall. Could you tell me how old the boat is please? Well, yes, the boat is 95 years old and she was used to carry cargoes of wheat from Ipswich to London and now takes a few cargoes of sugar for a big sugar company. Would you like to steer it and we'll this see place. if we can get it through this bridge you were talking this about? Place. There we are. Turn round and look where you're going. Look. There we are. That's right. Get this way. Not too bad. Hold it there for a minute. Look right through there underneath the sail. Look. You can see the post office tower right in the middle of the tower bridge. Look. I took a picture of it this morning with my own camera. Did you really? Oh, that was good. Yes. Hello. And if you look underneath the mainsail there now, look, you can see tower bridge. Look. Hmm. Now, if you look over there, look. You'll see there's a big fire boat there coming to welcome you to London. Alright? Oh, it's great. That is, isn't it? Yes, that's marvellous, huh? Hey? You see how close we are to the bridge now? I reckon we ought to call up the bridge master and see whether he can uh, open the bridge for us, don't you? Yeah. Tower bridge control, tower bridge control, sailing barge may, over. Sailing barge may, this is tower bridge radio. Yes, I've got young Benjamin here. He reckons he's been in touch with you and wants you to open the bridge. I'll ask him to do so. Good morning, Benjamin. This is Tower Bridge Radio. Will you please open Tower Bridge? Commencing a bridge lift now. The road traffic has been stopped. That's it. Uh, if you like to walk down the other end there, you'll be able to see the Tower Bridge open and the mast won't be in the way, will it? Off you go.
That was good. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Did you really get that bridge to open just for you? Yes. You'd better not open it when we're running through on the London Marathon, had you? Mm. Otherwise, I'd have to jump across. How was he, Captain Barge? Very good, very good. Was he a good seaman? Yes, he wasn't seasick. No? No, no. Is there a future for him? I would think so. He was handling things very well. Well, now then. Do you think, therefore, because he was strong enough to open Tower Bridge just by picking up your phone, that we should give him a gym fix it badge? Do you think it's a good think idea? We ought to. Well, might I ask you to give him his badge and that'll make his day for him? Just reach across there, boss. There you go. There we go. Look at man. that. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, very good. Now, hey. Well, now then, how's about that then? Well, here's a letter now from Hartburn in Cleveland. Dear Jim, please could you fix it for me to be a rock star with Amazulu? I absolutely adore them and I hope they get to number one in the chart. Yours, hopefully, Charlotte Griffiths. Amazulu? Well, they're all over the world. But tonight, they're here for us. points does she get out of 10? 10. 10. 10. 11, 12. <laughs> really? Well, we have a little bit of business first. We understand, Annie, my sweetheart, uh -huh. that you had been 
wanting one of these Jim will fix it badges for yourself. <laughs> Somebody tells us this. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no shortcut to a Jim will fix it badge. <laughs> Unfortunately, we'd have to do you a fix it first before we could give you a badge, uh, right? Okay. But we arranged a fix it. You'll see on account of you've always wanted your gran to be on television, haven't you? Yeah. Gran, where are you, gran? Come here, grandma, darling. <laughs> sweetheart stand by me because you see unfortunately before she gets this jibble fix it badge there's a price she must pay oh dear. <laughs> the price is an embrace oh, oh, that all time. thank you very much indeed <laughs> now gran if you'd like to put that badge on herself and with jake in case it won't go over the hair there's a bit of fastening at the back there like that okay there you go we get rid of that one for the starters how about that then now Now then, we come to the problem of this one here. We come to this one here. Mm. Now then, you have assured me she was terrific, OK? Absolutely. And ten out of ten. Yes, Right, definitely. all right then. Well, now then, my sweetheart, would you like to give her I a Jim will fix it badge? To. And all will be under control. You one, are a two. Born to hey, how about that? Let's go in. Right, here we go now with a letter from Weybridge in Surrey. Dear Jim, I am making about cars and my great uncle James is 70 this year. He got 99% in his Rolls Royce apprentice exam in 1934 to be able to show for Rolls Royces. He drove Winston Churchill once, you know. I would be grateful if you could fix it for me to see the Rolls Royce car factory with my great uncle James. Love, Paul Sheridan. No problem. Here we go with a double fix it all the way to crew. Seven matching joints all together. 
you've got eight separate pieces of veneer. And what we do, we tape it all together and joint it, then we profile it, and everything's cut out, and it all comes back together again when it's polished. Ready to put it in, Paul? Yes. Ready to go for a run now? James, how does this car compare with the Rolls Royces you used to show for all those years ago? Actually, there isn't all that difference, really. I'm sort of trying to spin him around in my mind, trying to think of things. Because, you know, apart from the fact that this car's automatic, mine wasn't, this had power steering, mine wasn't. Really, the, uh, the feel of the car when you're sitting behind it, the handling of it, is absolutely identical. You know, it's just so uh, you've uh, gone back in time again. Nice day. Yes. Did you see lots of interesting things? Yes. You did. You did a lot of work as well, didn't you? Yes. Right, James. Did you enjoy driving? It's fantastic. Nice, nice Wonderful. time. Uh, Dr. Rolls, I noticed that when the professor here was helping in the factory there, he was taking uh, uh, big scourging marks on that. No, no problem. Smashing is okay. The end product was. Yeah, smashing is alright. Oh, right, because you can't go around Damage putting. Oh, that's all right then. That's all right. So what we have here, what we have here, we have got two Jimbo Fix-It Barrett's. So, Dr. Rolls, if I ask you to give that to James, El Chauffeur, at the same time as I give this one over here, then we've got a double Fix-It there. And thanks to everybody. Oh. Oh. I've got something for you on behalf of Rolls, Royce. For me? Certainly have. A new Rolls Royce? Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Fourteen of them? No, all them represent all the Rolls Royces. Yeah. 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 Ye
I'm afraid, I'm very much afraid, they were fantastic. They were... Oh! Listen to me, I'm getting old. You're not. I'm too old for this. Bonnie Langford, <laughs> Bonnie Langford will never get old, so oh. there. A lo lovely song, lyrics by our own Dr Magic. Now then, the mm. thing is this. You see, I was hoping, with them being squeaky mice, that they may have forgotten their steps and I could have said, you do not get your gym or fix it badges, but unfortunately they were terrific. So therefore, here, if I can just move this way, is number one here. Right. Do you want a hand with that? Oh, yes, I think I'd better. Oh. oh, it's very delicate, is this yeah, operation. Yeah. Just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful. Bonnie, number two, if you help me, because this is a very... Oh, we mustn't... Oh, it matches. Hairdo. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And then... Do you think that we did, uh, I'm afraid I have to give them all away. You do indeed. Oh, it's costing us a fortune in Jim of Fix It Badges. Oh. How about that then? Oh. How about that then? Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> we go now with a letter from Washington in Town and Weir. Dear Jim, please could you fix it for me to fly a World War II Spitfire Mark V fighter in a mock-up dogfight against a Messerschmitt 108. I have never flown before. Yours hopefully, Simon Newstead. Away, why, I bunny lad. Now, the thing is, with a little bit of fact and a little bit of fantasy, here we go with a magnificent film. that the Battle of Britain is about to begin. Who are you? Simon Newstead, sir. How old are you? Thirteen. I see. <laughs> and this is a national emergency in Newstead. I've just had a message from Downing Street. To Commander Duxford from Prime Minister Personal. 1,100 hours, crucial intercept, lone bandit, Messerschmitt, believed to be Black Baron. Must be stopped. A farmer in the North Weald sector here has just rung with confirmation. He spotted him flying low and fast and heading directly for us. There's no question. 
It's the Black Baron, all right. The squadron are up on a sortie at the Sector 16, which appears to leave only you and me, Newstead. I'd go up myself if it wasn't for this gammy leg. He came out of the sun and winged me over Dunkirk. Bagged six of our best boys that day. Herr Baron. Ginger. Chalky White. Jonas, Spotty Matthews. I'll go, sir. Can you fly? No, but I can try. <laughs> How many hours in spits? None at all. Yes. <coughs> all right, old boy, off you go. And Simon. Yes, sir. Don't let the boys down. Scramble, scramble, scramble. Ground control to Red Fix leader. Can you hear me? Over. Hearing you loud and clear, ground control. Keep your eyes peeled, Red Fix leader. Banded at six o'clock. Over. Congratulations, Red Fix leader. Congratulations. field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. Well done. You saved us all. Thank you very much. Nick, what can we say? A thousand thanks for your aircraft. That's quite all right. Yeah. Superb aircraft. Is it the only two-seater Spitfire left? It's, in... a, it's the only two-seater that's now flying anyhow, certainly in Europe. Oh, for you to lend it to us like that was, was remarkable. Now then, do you think he made a good pilot for no, no hours in spits at all? I think it's very, very good indeed. I mean, he frightened me a couple of times. Well, I did say it was uh, a little bit of fact and a little bit of fantasy made it all together. That... Listen, did you, did you give that, that, uh, that Black Baron his comeuppance, did you? Yeah. What happened to him? I don't know. You, you don't know? Well, I know what happened to him. 
because he's come back here to see you. He wants a word with you. <laughs> Now, what have you got to say for yourself? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing? Like Baron, this is the man who did it. What have you got to say to him? Oh, I feel rather embarrassed. A 13 year old boy to shoot me down after no hours in Spitfires. Really? I just can't believe it. Well, now then, under the circumstances, Nick, for what we can never thank you for, if I give you his Jim will fix it badge, right. but I would have thought that under the circumstances, the vanquished might have just presented the victor. What do you think? I think that's right. Yes. Mr. Black Baron, do you think I could ask you to suffer round there? Don't worry, we can't feel a thing. <laughs> right, round we go. Then he will come back to see you now. It's a good job he's a nice fella. Yeah. Good job he's a nice fella. Make sure he doesn't pull your head off. Can you manage that? Oh, my. Oh, oh, the damage that's been caused to the man. Look at that. He's been in hospital ever since. Oh, really? Hey, how about that? Hey, there we are. Ladies and gentlemen, what else can we say except do have a safe week? God bless. And we'll see you next week for some more Jimmel Fix It. Bonnie Langford is appearing in Peter Pan at the Congress Theatre Eastbourne. series starts on BBC One. Anzacs charts the fortunes of a group of Australian volunteers in the First World War and stars Paul Hogan. Cleary, middleweight champion of North Queensland, all-time champion horse breaker of the Outer Bar Coup and breaker of women's hearts everywhere. Anything else? Well, sometimes I tell lies. <laughs> Shut up, Cleary. But the horror of war awaits the men of Anzacs, starting on Monday afternoon at 2 o'clock and continuing all week on BBC One. And now on BBC One, as a tribute to Leslie Dwyer, who died just after Christmas, after 70 years in the theatre, films and television, we've replaced the build episode of Heidi High with one from 1981, featuring Mr Partridge. <laughs>